Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 662. If you want to live a long, enjoyable life without disease, please listen. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast number 662. Today we're going to talk about aging and how to avoid the problems of aging. You can't stop getting older, as they always say, but you can get old in a healthy fashion and it takes planning, it takes a little work, it takes changing your lifestyle, but it also takes knowledge. And no one ever tells us what it's gonna feel like especially for women and men, to get older. They just, medical people talk to us until we're about 50, and then after that, it's just like, oh, you're old. Well, the qualities or the things that happen to us as we age can be adjusted or put off, or uh, we can have a healthy aging process. And uh, this is what we do at BioBalance Health. We not only... Give, you, give our patients the foundation of healthy aging, which is replacing all the hormones that disappear in our early 50s, or even before that. Uh, but we also then help them design a lifestyle that will help them stay healthy and help them be able to do all the things they do when they're 40, when they're 60, or when they're 50, and, and when they're 70. So you have to think ahead. You can't be like the, the little chipmunk that just played all the time and the other chipmunk put its, uh, dug, their nut, dug his nuts under the ground so that he could retrieve them later. I mean, you really do have to be healthy in the years between 40 and 60 to actually remain healthy after that. So you need to listen to this. Um, I was going to start pre- presenting this with what disease scares you the most? that you will get, that you might get when you're older. And most of the time, those are diseases we've seen happen in our family. Therefore, we feel more at risk, and we've seen the process of the diseases uh, unfold in front of us. But here are the diseases of aging. I've listed them so that you can see. Diseases of aging, cancer is much more common as we get older because our immune system decreases without testosterone. Testosterone supports that. Type 2 diabetes is much more common as we get older, especially in America, because we're fatter as young people. And as we are overweight, as we get old, we develop type 2 diabetes. Arthritis, heart attack, you know, these strokes, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's disease all get more common as we get older. Osteoporosis happens over time and is slow, but begins in our 40s, and we have to counteract it at that time to even even at that time, to prevent it in the future. Frailty and ability to walk up the stairs. You've seen all those commercials at late night television of the, of the elevator you can sit on and take you upstairs. Uh, I'm not sure that anybody really wants that in their house. Uh, immune deficiency where you can't fight viruses and bacteria. Uh, autoimmune diseases and depression and anxiety get much worse as we get older. Um, so, Obviously, no one wants to be sick, I don't think. Probably psychiatrically, somebody might want to be sick, but in general, none of us wants to be sick. So that's what my practice is. My practice is preventing disease and seeing disease at its start, at its very nidus, the very beginning of a disease, and then informing the patient that this is happening and that giving that patient a plan on how to avoid that disease happening. We could actually pull people back from the edge of a disease when we see it starting to unfold. Now, giving them hormones, that's something that people, testosterone is the ultimate um, anti-aging hormone. For women, a little estrogen is also necessary. 
and then giving you back your thyroid, if your thyroid is, uh, is low, is also going to help you not have the diseases of aging. But that's not, that's not the only thing. That's kind of easy. You go in, you get your hormones, and then you walk out. But we give our patients a plan. And the plan has to do with lifestyle, diet, exercise, and what supplements to take. Not everything they see on late night television is a supplement you want to take. Some of them counteract each other. Some of them are useless, waste of money, and then some of them can do some harm. So we try to pick the supplemental nutrition that you need for what you have already to avoid the diseases that it appears you may be developing in the future. Now, if you want to ignore the fact that you're getting old, and if you, I've sometimes had patients that think, oh, I'm an athlete, so I'm really, over, I'm healthy, I've always been healthy, I can do this by myself, that's ridiculous. I mean, you can, you can exercise and you can diet, but you can't give yourself your hormones back and you can't avoid the d diseases of aging without them. So you can, you can think that you're that healthy, but I bet if we talk, say, if you're a guy, we talk to your wife, I bet there's a problem in the bedroom. If you're 60 and your testosterone's low, that's a given. So that is something that you have to come to a um, psychological um, crossroad, and you have to take the right path. You have to actually say, I'm making a choice not to do anything and to age the, except for maybe exercise or maybe diet or none, nothing at all. Or I'm going to take a path toward staying healthy so I can avoid the diseases of aging. So at this point, um, if I haven't scared you into <laughs> taking the path uh, that is the best for you, the healthiest for you, then uh, let me just remind you of the things that you treasure and that you value in your life as a healthy, say, 40 or 50-year-old, we value sex. But sex isn't going to be there if our testosterone is low or, or if we have bad vessels because we've collected a lot of plaque on our arteries and we're a, a setup for heart disease. Um, sex requires good vessels, and it requires a lack of diabetes, and it requires testosterone for both sexes. So these, the, if you want to have sex the rest of your life, you have to replace your testosterone. You can't really get out of that. If you want to be able to play golf and hike and bike throughout your lifetime, it's going to be really hard because if you don't replace your hormones and you don't eat properly and you don't uh, diet, uh, meaning eat a whole foods diet, that's the proper diet we should all be eating. Uh, we shouldn't eat processed foods. We shouldn't eat stuff out of a box. We, or out of a bag, like chips. We should be eating whole foods at our meals and having healthy snacks of fruit and nuts, possibly. There are other things you can have for snacks, obviously. But if you want to be able to play golf the rest of your life, if you want to have good joints, if you want to be able to have muscle mass where you can hit the ball and be out of pain in your, in your musculoskeletal system, maintain your back so that you don't have... Um, spinal stenosis, which is basically the back kind of crushing in on, it, on itself and, and narrowing the area that your, uh, your spine goes through. Basically, all of the nerves to your let lower legs go through your back and to your abdomen. So if you want to be able to ha have all the necessities of playing a sport, then you should think about getting your testosterone replaced if it's low. If, you, if your job's like me and you have to think for a living, uh, I, I truly have to confess I can't think without testosterone. If I don't get my testosterone pellets, then my short-term memory is less than it could be. And that's always been true since I had my ovaries out when I was 47 till now when I'm 69. I can barely say that number. Anyway, thinking, if you want to be a, if you have thinking related to your job, which is everybody, then to do your job or to even take care of your house and your children, uh, or your grandchildren, you need to think. Do you like to exercise? You're going you're gonna to need some kind of hormones to help you exercise the rest of your life, working, holding your grandchildren. I mean, if you have osteoporosis badly, you're not even going to be able to carry your grandchildren around. So that's something that women love to do, and men love it too. They, men have a, um, a later onset of osteoporosis, so you'd be older when you get it. But still, 
That's something we enjoy, a happy mood, reading, going to church without a helper, going anywhere without a helper, um, being able to walk freely anywhere, uh, not going, going out to dinner for, or going to a party without somebody else. If you like to dance, dancing is a que questionable. You may not, one of, of two people in a partnership may not be able to dance because they aren't taking care of themselves as they age. They, they just don't have the strength. So you should add all the things that you love to do right now there and then realize that some of those things aren't going to be a possibility as you get older. Now, I uh, heard a story from Joe, my COO. He loves the story, and I love it too. He, he says to people, now, as you get older, you expect that your vision's going to change, and you'll have to wear reading glasses, and then you may have to wear glasses for, vision, for distance vision. So if you're thinking, I want to age gracefully and not do anything, then don't get glasses because it is getting hormones to protect the rest of your body is important as getting glasses. It keeps you connected to your family unit and your social unit. It is very important to be able to read. So to have glasses, that's a way of staying, like keeping up and adjusting for your age and the limitations of it. And so is getting your diet right, your supplements right, and your hormones right. Now, if you want to think even older, as we get even older, then we can't hear. And you know how hard it is to communicate with someone. Your parents probably have lost some of their hearing and won't wear their hearing aid. Well, that's how frustrating that is when your spouse or your parent doesn't wear a hearing aid and you're trying to t communicate with them and they aren't hearing you at all. That is very frustrating for you. Just think how frustrating it will be when you're the one that can't hear and you just choose not to use your hearing aid. It's just like choosing right now when you're not sick yet to choose not to do anything about your hormones and your, and your body and your mind. You need to prevent these future illnesses. It is really important to your life. So I hope now you're convinced that um, I just like to, you know, think about how terrible it is to have multiple surgeries, have multiple heart attacks. I mean, this all can be prevented. This is not your future. Uh, if even if your family says, "Well, we have heart attacks in our in our family," and you go through the family tree. Um, a very um, easy way of doing this is when we ask you your family history. And we ask you if it's your father or your mother, or if it's your grandfather on your father's side or grandmother on your mother's side, who has these d diseases. So if you think about genetics, that's what we're really doing. We're doing a rough estimate of what your genetics could be. So, for instance, you say, you tell me that... Your grandfather on your father's side had a heart attack, and your father had a heart attack. And then on the other side, nobody had a heart attack, nobody had a stroke, nobody had an aortic aneurysm, nothing vascular happened on that side, and they all lived through their 60s or 70s. Then I, I look at you and I figure, you've got a 50-50, maybe even less. Because you also, your mother's family had nothing, your father's family did, so it's very possible that you only got one gene for having a uh, high cholesterol and having high inflammation and developing heart disease. So that tells me something. If both sides are positive, then I'm more concerned. But just because you had somebody in your family say, I had heart disease, does not mean you're going to get heart disease. So let me give you an example. I, I was pretty concerned about all of my family history. My, um, my mother's family, um, my mother's mother died of a heart attack and had diabetes at a young age, like 50, 52. And, I, and my grandfather on that side died early of an accident. So I don't know anything about his history, his genetic history. Then I, on my father's side, his father had diabetes and had a heart attack. So I'm looking at this, and if I'm just looking at the heart disease thing, I'm thinking maybe I have it on both sides. 
So then I do my genetics, and I don't have that. Another thing was they both had diabetes. So I thought, well, maybe I have, I have the diabetic gene. I had my genes done, which is much, much more specific than having a family history. And I lucked out. And I did not get the diabetes gene, but I got three out of five genes for obesity. So, so they, and they were obese, and that's why they got diabetes. So it was not the diabetes that was the initial genetic reason for their disease. It was initially that they were obese. And so I've, from ver a very young age, have limited my diet, have limited my portions, have eaten properly. I've taken vitamins since... I mean, my, my mom believed in vitamins, and we had every supplement, because no one eats exactly the way they should. And we need certain genetic types of us need different vitamins and different supplements. <coughs> that, If you've listened to some of my recent health casts, you even know that some supplements you have to take because you're taking a, a medicine. So if you're on a certain medicine, you... You may not know it, but you need to take, like if you're on a statin, you have to take CoQ10, because statin uses up all the CoQ10 in your liver, and you need that enzyme. So, so having said family history is just a, a basic um, gross way to figure out if somebody's at risk for something, then we can use genetics and see if you have the genetics to actually have that. But look at me. I mean, I have the genetics on both sides. I received the gene for obesity, yet I'm not obese. So why is that? Well, one of the things we've learned in the recent past, which is like 15 years, is that with a good lifestyle and a good diet and hormone replacement, we can turn our, we can turn our genes off. Our bad genes can be turned off, but our, but our good genes can be turned off too. If we smoke and we drink and we, we don't take care of ourselves and, and we aren't, we aren't hearing this uh, plea for you to live a healthy life. It doesn't take much time. It doesn't take much money. It, doesn't, it probably takes less money in terms of food. So eating a healthy diet does not mean that you're going to eat an expensive diet. So if you are hearing my plea, my plea is you may have a, you may have a bad family history but have no genes for a certain disease. You may, have, you may have a clean family history, yet you have, you have genes for a, a, another disease. You also may have um, genes in your genetics. If you go that far and get genetics, we have a new test um, that we offer, which is, actually looks at all of your genes and tells you how much fat, how much carb, how much protein you should eat, which which sup or which vitamins you're likely to be short on or or deficient in. It tells you when you should eat in the day, how much water, when you should drink your water. It's amazing. Uh, it's called Nutrigen, and so we're offering this to our patients. It's a really good specific look at what hormones or excuse me, what genes you have. And we like to use this with our weight loss program because it's much more specific directly to you now. What it doesn't tell me is what genes you've turned off or on. So that part is called epigenetics, and that's yet a more, a more um, aggressive genetic testing, which can be done, which we have not adopted at this time yet. But to know what your genes are, it's really important. So um, <clears throat> you can do two things or three things about aging. You can know your risks, that is, do your genetics and find out what your risks are and find out what your healthiest life path is. That would be the first thing. Find out about you. Educate yourself about aging. Nobody talks about aging. They don't go, oh, yeah, you're going to need glasses when you're 45 you're, to see near. You're, you're going to be um, getting osteoporosis starting at menopause. You're going to start gaining weight at menopause because we all, all women become insulin resistant. And men have a 10-year advantage when they're 55 instead of like 45 to 50. Then their testosterone becomes critical. It usually goes to a level that is not acceptable. Free testosterone is the only thing that matters. Free testosterone is the amount of testosterone that your body can use. Everything else, the total testosterone is just bound up, 
98% uh, of it is bound up and inaccessible. It's just storage. And it has a protein, sex hormone binding globulin on top of it, and it can't be used. So you need to know where you stand with your hormones. You need to look at, for the symptoms of aging. You need to ask your doctor for help with that. And if you can't get help with that, then you need to find a doctor who is a longevity specialist like we are or an integrated physician, usually integrated medicine, treats or prevents the diseases of aging. So looking for help and getting help, that's the next step. And then the last step is do it. You know, if your doctor says these are the foods you should eat, then eat those foods. If you need the supplements, then take the supplements and not all the stuff on television that they tell you about. Um, I'll, I have to tell you this last little vignette because it happened recently. I saw um, a man who was 78, and I saw him seven years before that one time. And I, I had already laid out a whole plan for him because he was pre-diabetic, he was pre-heart disease, he was pre-obesity. Um, so I had, I had set apart this whole plan for him, and I am sure that had I been able to treat his testosterone deficiency, treat his thyroid deficiency, and get him on the proper diet and exercise program, that he would be healthy today. He comes back. He's had a heart attack. He's had a stroke. He had five admissions or six admissions after his heart attack for all kinds of complications that you can get once you've damaged your heart muscle. He had pulmonary embolism secondary to the heart attack. I mean, the things that can happen after, you it, it's not just having a heart attack. I mean, if you survive it, you're lucky. But then you have to have stents placed or you have to have open heart surgery. All of these things nobody wants. And all of these things for this gentleman could have been avoided. He also, diabetes, obesity. I mean, now, now he doesn't just have prediabetes, he has diabetes. I've got to treat him differently, more aggressively, and the chance of him losing um, a lot of weight goes down. And now he's older and it's going to be harder for him to change his ways. His, he's, he has finally st stopped drinking and smoking. I mean... I asked him to do that seven years ago. I was hoping that that would make a difference. Uh, so if you think about this, you know, he and his wife said, we should have listened to you. You don't want to be that guy. You want to be the guy that comes in or the girl that comes in, woman that comes in and says, look, I want to be healthy the rest of my life. I want to have good bones, good muscles. I want to have a good heart. I don't want a heart attack. I, I, I don't want to have to wear a wig because my hair falls out. I need the hormones I need to stay healthy and... I need you to tell me what to eat, how to eat, what the best eating plan is for me. Try to get to your ideal weight. Exercise every day, not just once a week for 20 minutes. That's not going to do it. 20 minutes of fitness, forget that. It doesn't work. So you have to exercise daily. Most people are built for every other day. That would also be okay in some circumstances, but you have to, you have to exercise. We're meant to be outside and moving around. That was how we're built. So do your exercise. Watch what you eat. Eat good food. It's not, it's not hedonistic eating. Yes, sometimes you can go out to dinner and have a great, wonderful tasting food. But food is for energy. It is for building your body back. Every day you lose cells. You need to replace them. You need to eat the right things that can cause you to be able to replace them. So food is fuel. And it is also building blocks. So you need to have your food controlled and not eat the American diet, which has been hoisted on us because we make grains. Grains are kind of the problem. We don't need as many grains as we have in our life. In fact, we need very few. So this is the kind of attitude that you should have uh, when going to your physician. I'm going to then, next week, talk about avoiding how exactly to avoid the pain of, of uh, getting older and having all the diseases of aging so, and what to look for. So please join us next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. 
For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth.